In order to prove the geometric series, you first need to understand what a series is in comparison to a partial sum and a sequence. So first of all, we have a sequence. If a sequence is a geometric sequence, it would be in the form of q to the n, which would mean that if you plug in all the natural numbers possible, you would have q to the 0, q to the 1, q squared, and so on, all the way up to q to the n. So a sequence is just a list of numbers. A partial sum, which we can write as Sn, or as sigma of q to the k, from usually k equals 0 up to n, would be a sum of these values added together up to a particular point. So q to the 0 plus q1 plus q squared, and so on. So a partial sum is just a sum of a finite number of values. Meanwhile, a series is the sum of all the possible values for the, um, for the sequence. So we would write it as sigma of q to the n from n equals 0 up to plus infinity. And if we want to take all the values all the way up to infinity, we have to take the partial sum, which was up to n, and make n go to plus infinity. So formally, we can say that a series is the limit of the partial sum. So in order to prove the geometric series, we first need to prove the geometric partial sum. And then once we prove the partial sum, we can um, take the limit of that to find the, the geometric series. So first of all, just to review the geometric sequence, If you have the limit of something in the form of q to the n, the limit is going to depend on the value of q, the base, and you're going to have four cases. The first case is when q is greater than 1, then when q is equal to 1, in between minus 1 and 1, and smaller or equal to negative 1. So if q is bigger than 1, so for example we could have 2 to the n, or 3 to the n, in any of these cases, as n gets bigger, this is going to get significantly bigger. So eventually it's going to go all the way up to plus infinity. While if q equals 1, then we have 1 to the n, and 1 to any number is always 1. If q is in between minus 1 and 1, so for example if we have a half, a half to the n, if you put in a few numbers, so if you put in 0, 1, 2, and 3, you would have a half, uh, sorry, you would have one, then one half, one fourth, one eighth, and so on. And so as n gets bigger, we can see that the value that we get from the sequence is going to get smaller. Specifically, it's going to get close to zero plus. So zero from the positive side or from above. If instead you had minus a half to the n, the numbers themselves are similar. But depending on whether n is even or odd, sometimes the values are going to be negative. So if n is even, then it's going to stay positive, but if n is odd, it's going to become negative. So we can see that the values still approach 0, but they approach 0 from both above and below, which means that the limit is 0, neither plus nor minus. So overall, we can say that the limit is just 0. If q is smaller or equal to negative 1, so for example, if we have minus 1 to the n, again, we can put in a few numbers. If we put in 0, we get 1. If we put in 1, we get negative 1. 2, we get 1, then negative 1, and so on. So when a sequence goes to two different directions, we would say that we don't have a limit. If instead you had minus 2 to the n, that would give us 1 minus 2 4, minus 8, and so on. So we can see that the positives are going up, specifically they're going to plus infinity, and the negatives are going down to minus infinity. So just like the other one, because it's going in two different directions, we would say that we don't have a limit overall. But the difference between them is that the first case, when we had minus 1 to the n, that one was bounded. It was between negative 1 and 1. And this one instead is going to be unbound. But either way, the limit does not exist.
So now we can start looking at the geometric partial sum. So keep in mind that even if they ask you to prove the geometric series, it's implied that they want you to prove they want you to prove the partial sum first. So if we now look at the partial sum, first of all, we're going to look at the case when q is equal to 1. So when q is equal to 1, then our sequence would be 1 to the n. And 1 to the n, no matter what number you put in, is always going to give you 1. So if we're doing the partial sum of this, that would mean that we have to add the ones all together. So um, since we're putting in all the numbers starting from 0, so this would be technically q to the 0, this would be q to the 1, and so on. We can see that from this number on, so from here to here, we have 1 n times. So all of this is just 1 times n, which is just n. And then we have an extra 1 for when n is equal to 0. So in the end, our partial sum is just going to be n for all of these, and then plus 1 for the extra 1 at the beginning. If instead we have a case when q is not equal to 1, if q is not equal to 1, then we have q to the n, which again is q to the 0, q to the 1, and so on. And q to the 0 is just going to be 1, regardless of, of the specific q value. So if we want to do a partial sum, we're just adding all those values together. And then we just want to find a way to simplify all of this. So the steps are not going to be particularly intuitive, but they're going to make sense at the end, because then you'll see how everything simplifies. So first of all, you're going to multiply both sides by negative q. And if you multiply that out, you would take 1 times minus q, so minus q. q times minus q would become minus q squared. q squared would become negative q cubed, and so on. So notice how everything on the right side becomes negative, and the powers go up by 1. So for the last one, that would become q to the n plus 1. Now the next step is to add Sn to both sides. So Sn is just the partial sum, which we said before was equal to 1 plus q plus q squared, and so on. So this is what we had over here. On the left side, we're going to actually add Sn. So you're literally going to take plus Sn. While on the right side, you're going to take the other writing. So you're going to add 1 plus q plus q squared, and so on. So for the right side, notice how most of this is going to cancel out at this point. So the minus q will cancel out the positive q. These two will cancel out. This one would have been over here. And if this is q to the n plus 1, q to the n was right before that. So in the end, you're left with Sn minus Qsn. And on the right side, you're left with a 1 here and minus Q to the n plus 1. And if we then factorize Sn, that would become 1 minus Q inside. And if we isolate it, you end up with 1 minus Q to the n plus 1 over 1 minus Q. So in the end, our geometric partial sum is going to be n plus 1 when q is equal to 1, 
and 1 minus q to the n plus 1 divided by 1 minus q whenever q is different from 1. So it's not that difficult to prove, it's just that you have to memorize these two steps because, as I said, they're not very intuitive. Um, but at the end, you can, see, you can see how everything simplifies really nicely. So you just want to remember that you have to multiply by negative q, and then afterwards add a partial sum. So on the left, you want to keep it as a sum so that later you can factorize. And on the right side, you want to write everything out with the cubes so that it cancels out and simplifies with um, the previous part. So this is a partial sum for the, again, geometric, um, the geometric partial sum. Now, if we want to figure out what the series is going to be, remember how we said at the very beginning that a series is just the limit of the partial sum. So now we're going to have to take the limit of each of these parts, and we have to consider that the geometric uh, partial sum, which is a special kind of sequence, is going to have different cases depending on uh, the value of q. So just like we talked about over here, we now have to take the limit for each of these cases. So as we were saying, the series is equal to the limit of the partial sum. And since the first case for the sequence was when q is greater than 1, we would take the limit of uh, the case when q is not equal to 1. So that would be the second one. So if q is greater than 1, it could be, for example, 2. And if you focus on the top, here we would have 2 to the n plus 1. And we said before that 2 to the n tends to plus infinity, so so will 2 to the n plus 1, just a tiny bit more quickly. So that means that overall we have 1 minus infinity in the numerator. And in the denominator, keep in mind that q is bigger than 1. So if q is bigger than 1, for example, it's 2, then the denominator is going to give us a negative number. So that will be just a negative number. And 1 minus infinity will give us minus infinity. If you then divide it by negative number, the minuses cancel out, and you're just going to be left with plus infinity. So just to understand this, we're saying that if you take the sum of, for example, 2 to the n from 0 to infinity, that will give you plus infinity. If you think about it, it's pretty logical because the sequence 2 to the n tends to infinity. If you're then adding all those values that are going to infinity together, that's still going to give you infinity. So essentially nothing changes compared to the sequence in this case. If q is equal to 1, then we have to look at the top case instead. And if n is going to infinity, that means that we have infinity plus 1, which is still just infinity. So this is saying that if you take the sum of 1 to the n from 0 to infinity, that will also give you infinity. So the logic behind this one is that if the sequence is 1 to the n, it's always 1, so it's constantly 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And if you're adding together an infinite number of 1s, that's also going to give you infinity. So it's not going to be as fast as the other one, but eventually it's still going to tend to plus infinity. Now if q is in between negative 1 and 1, we have to go back to the first case, because remember that this is the case for every q different from 1. So if q is 1 half, for example, then here we would have a half to the n plus 1. And a half to the n, we said earlier that it tends to 0. So if you have to the n plus 1, it just tends to 0 a little bit more quickly. So in the numerator, we have 1 minus 0. 
In the denominator, we're going to have a number. Now, in the previous case, in the first one specifically, uh, we didn't really care what that number was in the bottom because infinity over a number is still going to be infinity. But since the numerator is now going to give us 1, the number that we have in the bottom is going to affect the final result. So we're just going to leave that as 1 minus q. But keep in mind that q is just a number. So in the end, in this situation, a series is going to converge to this number. So in this case, if you had series of a half to the n, the sequence tends to zero by itself. But if you're um, looking at the different values of the sequence, there's still positive numbers, for this case at least. And if you add them together, you're going to get a positive number. So in this case, if you then plugged in a half into your formula, you would get 1 over 1 minus a half, so 1 over a half, which would be 2. And so the sum of all those small numbers is going to converge to 2. For the last case, if we have q smaller or equal to minus 1, again, we're taking the limit of 1 minus q to the n plus 1 over 1 minus q. But now we have a q of, for example, minus 1. And minus 1 to the n, we said at the beginning, was irregular. Same for minus 2 to the n or anything um, with a base that's smaller than, smaller or equal to minus 1. So for the case of minus 1 to the n, we can say that the limit here does not exist. So if you have 1 minus something that doesn't have a limit, you still have no limit overall. And again, q is just a number. So if you're dividing that by a number, it's not going to change the fact that you don't have a limit. So the idea is that if you take the sum of minus 1 to the n from 0 to infinity, it's constantly changing from minus 1 to 1, minus 1 to 1, and so on. And you're adding all those values together. Since it never actually stops, the sum is going to keep on going up and down. Because if you start adding the numbers together, this gives you 0, this gives you 1, then you get 0 again, then you get 1 again, and it keeps on going up and down. So the point is that it's irregular just like it was before when it was a sequence. So to summarize, we had that for a geometric series, in the first two cases that we did, so when q was bigger than 1 or equal to 1, for both cases we had plus infinity. For q is between minus 1 and 1, we found that it converges to this number here, 1 over 1 minus q. And when q is smaller or equal to minus 1, you're not going to have a limit, so the limit does not exist. So make sure you realize that there is differences between sequences, between the sequence rule for this and the series rule for this. The main difference is the middle part that the sequence tends to zero, but the series is going to converge to a number that can be positive or negative. So I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments.